Hello and welcome to Court Movie Club, best of 2010-2020. Here we go. You'd better see a psychiatrist, quick. This is a video I've been wanting to do now for a while that I've been planning for a good few months. Uh, it's took a while to get the list together, I've got to say. Uh, I've been putting tiles in there and then taking tiles out for a good while now. Um, so, I didn't have this channel last year. I basically started this channel as a distraction from all the craziness uh, that started at the, at the start of the year. Um, talking about movies and stuff was taking my mind off current world events um, and here we go we're at the really at the end of 2020 now and um, I couldn't really do an end a best of 2020 films list because there hasn't been enough content for me to kind of do that honestly um, so I thought I'd cheat a little and do a decade and year and year list and include 2020 seeing as I couldn't do it last year because I didn't have a channel um, so I'm going to try and fly through this as quickly as possible because you know no one likes a really long video so here we go, it's the top 25, um, I'll try to do a top 20, it, I just couldn't do it. it, this was hard enough, so it's the top 25, um, they, I could put honourable mentions in, I could probably put about 10 in, but let's just see how we go, so here we go, it's got to be Keanu Reeves' massive comeback John Wick, which has um, populated most of 2010s uh, with its two sequels also, um, but let's go back to this one. Uh, typical kind of revenge story, but done really well. Um, you know, Keanu Reeves at the top of his game here. Probably his best movie since The Matrix for me. I, I, I've seen all three of them. I still prefer this one. I thought this started to get a little bit too silly. Um, this, you know, it's it's still quite grounded. and It's still really cool. It's still got the good scenes, good action scenes. And that. So, John Wick, number 25. Um, straight on to... The Guest, a film that was a nice surprise for me when it came out. I didn't really fancy it when I saw the promotional stuff for it, but uh, I read some really good reviews and uh, really enjoyed it. The soundtrack is amazing in this film. Um, your lead actor in this also, who, what's he called? What's he called? Dan Stevens, that's it. It's guy out of um, that British programme. Um, he's really good in this. Uh, Maycomb and Roe as well. He's uh, really good in this. Uh, she also did a film the same year, It Follows, which was another one that uh, nearly made it into this list. I was going to either put this in or that, but I, there's something about this that I, this, this just got a little bit more for me on this one. Uh, and the end's really cool as well. So, number that, there we go, the guest. Um, at number 23, Under the Skin. Um, Scarlett Johansson in a film that you've probably not seen her in before. Uh, Jonathan Glazer, who directed Sexy Beast and Birth. Uh, this is a one of a kind film. Um, you won't see anything like this. It's got a kind of Kubrickian uh, elements to it. Um, it's a lot of it was filmed um, in Scotland to basically put a camera um, in in a van with Scarlett Johansson, and Scarlett Johansson just drives around picking Scottish guys up because she, she's some kind of uh, subterranean alien. Um, who's in like this human disguise um, and luring guys to the deaths basically seducing them and luring them into the murky deaths you won't, you won't watch anything like this it, it's probably a bit too strange for mainstream audiences but I really enjoyed it um, I really like the ideas um, so there we go, I'll do the skin what we are now, number 22 Black Swan, Natalie Portman, Darren Aronofsky um, this was something that I added in recently because I rewatched it recently because obviously I've, had to, I've gone through a lot of these films recently to put them in this kind of order. Um, and I didn't initially have this in. I, I had something else in that I've obviously taken out now. Um, but after we rewatched this, yeah, brilliant film. Um, it's, it's, it's got like Cronenberg elements to it in, in parts. Uh, really good performance from Natalie Portman. Apparently she did most of this ballet work herself, which is... Uh, yeah, some, that's some triumph. Um, really good. Black Swan. Uh, next, we've got Mother. Uh, it's another Darinovsky film. 
Aronofsky film, sorry, uh, Jennifer Lawrence uh, in the best film she's been in for me. Uh, this film, however, is like Marmite. Uh, there's, uh, the pe there's people who love it and there's also people who hate it with absolute passion. Um, I loved it. Um, it this, this is like a suspense. This, well, it's, not, it's like tension all the way through the film. It just builds and builds and builds and it just blows in the end and there's some real shocking, like some really shocking scenes towards the end which upset a lot of people. Um, really good. Um, but uh, again, not really probably a mainstream audience kind of thing. Uh, but definitely worth checking out if you like a bit of something different. Love her. So, we're on number 20 now, aren't we? Right. So, this one has become more relevant this year than any other probably film in this list. Um, it was pretty scary when I watched it in 2011. Um, it's Contagion, which um, is pretty much a, a, like in watching a documentary now. Um, like I said, I watched it in 2011, I enjoyed it, and I thought it was like, imagine that, then that'd be really bad. And here we are, 2020, uh, this film pretty much plays out the events of what we've done this year, minus a couple of bits. Um, just crazy how this is all now happening. Um, it's, it's like it was foreseen, it's crazy. Uh, pretty relevant film, I reckon, um, for the times that we're living in right now. Um, if you haven't seen it, definitely watch it. It's pretty good, and you know you won't believe what's cool. You know, check it out. Uh, number nineteen, Hereditary. Uh, it's got a bit, probably the scariest film I've seen in quite a while. I sat there uncomfortable for most of the running time. Um, just really psychologically like brilliant horror movie. Um, I've not seen a horror film that's impressed me this much for quite a while. Uh, I'd, I'd heard good things, um, but I didn't expect it to be as, as good as it was. Um, obviously, you've got a high caliber actress in there, so I knew it was going to be all right, but it's way beyond my expectations. Again, there's a lot of people who don't like this film, um, and there's a lot of people that do, so you it depends what side of the fence you're on. If you've not seen it, definitely check it out, though. Okay, next. Ex Machina, um, saw this back in 2014, was really impressed with it. Um, this is um, the director who did this, has directed another film uh, that is further up this list. Uh, definitely, uh, he's definitely a creative eye. Uh, the effects in this are great, the story is great. It's one of them films that you put on and before you know it, it's, it's over because you've just been so into it that whole time. Um, it's, yeah, brilliant. I'm into I'm into this kind of sci-fi stuff, me. So, this was like, you know, it's a great watch for me. If you've not seen it again, definitely worth a look, especially if you're into sci-fi. Um, right, okay, on to Mad Max Fury Road. Um, doing a Mad Max movie out Mel Gibson um, didn't seem very appealing to me, and seemed like a bit of a bad idea. Um, even though Tom Hardy was lined up for it, I was still a bit. But yeah, wrong, definitely. Brilliant. Um, the action scenes in this are mind blowing, um, and there's not a lot of CGI going on as well, so it's just crazy what they you know the stunts that they pulled off for this film. Um, Tom Hardy's really good in it. Shelley Theron's really good in it also. Uh, yeah, definitely a worthy addition to a great franchise. Um, right, okay, first Christopher Nolan film in this list. Um, Christopher Nolan over the last two decades has probably become my favourite director. Um, so here we go. This came out in 2017. It is Dunkirk. Um, I like war movies. Um, I'm not so much a fan of like the older ones, but I like like you know some of the more recent stuff. Um, this is like kind of different. It's just totally it's like it's like Christopher Nolan does a does a war movie basically. The tension, the the film is just like tense it's now it's about 90 minutes of just pure tension um, just as you think these guys are getting to some safety they get put in another really dangerous situation that they've got to get out of um, and it just gets more and more and more and more and builds and builds and builds and it's going across different timelines and they all kind of connect at the end it's really well done Hans Zimmer again nailing it on the score um, definitely watch this um, 
sound bar full on biggest tell you can find amazing film um, okay this is another one that's just got put in recently uh, I'd seen it when it came out um, but I'd not seen it for a while and I, I'd put it on the rewatch list um, and I've this is the this I only put this in the list like the other day um, when I decided to, that this was it because you could you, with these kind of lists you can just keep going and going and going and going um, I had to like cut it off and I'm quite happy with this one um, but I've got to say you know it, 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 if you ask me again in a week it could be, it could probably be different I might have rewatched something else um, and you know there's a lot of films that I've not seen in, in this time period as well that you know I've got a yet to catch up on and uh, so anyway Sicario um, big fan of Emily Blunt actress I think she's done some really good films um, I really like Adjustment Bureau which she was in with Matt Damon um, I also really liked A Quiet Place and she's also really good in like Edge of Tomorrow and Looper, all films that uh, didn't quite make this list, but uh, definitely honourable mentions. But again, onto this one. Um, again, really, there's you know suspense in this movie. There's quite a lot. Um, the action scenes are really like they're not over the top at all. This all this is all stuff that could and is probably happening over in the Mexican border quite a lot. Um, it all builds to a pretty shocking finale. Um, Benicio del Toro is great in this, as is Josh Brolin, um, directed by the same guy who uh, also did Blade Runner twenty forty nine, which we will obviously be talking about a little later. Let's carry on. And now we're on to Hannah, which is one of the other titles in this list. Um, brilliant film. Uh, they've all they've done that was it Amazon series. Some studios, some streaming studios, done they've done a remake of this and turned it into a series. Um, this is a great film. Uh, Sherry Ronan is great in this. Uh, she was pretty young in this. Um, not sure how, how old she was, but she's pretty young. Uh, really good performance. Kate, Kate Blanchett is really good, as is Eric Banner. The score is by the Chemical Brothers, which is really good. I think it's the first film score they've done. Absolutely nailed it. Um, the guy who directed this, Joel Wright, doesn't actually direct stuff like this very often if at all uh, he does like like period pieces so this is kind of a different breed action movie completely um and it actually worked for for this it actually works um, i think if it had been done by a big action director it probably wouldn't have been as good um so yeah great film hannah um right okay so we've got some pretty big directors on this list and of one of my favorite directors is david fincher um and and there was just too many films to put in this list and I can't put everything in. So I tried to narrow some stuff down by, you know, okay, from putting a David Finch film in, which one am I putting in? Um, and it was either this or the social network. Um, you know, he's, he's done Mank, obviously, this year as well, which I did enjoy. Um, but, yeah, it's not it's not the same power as these films. So I've gone with Gone Girl, um, which I really thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, is Ben Affleck um, and Rosamund Pike, who's phenomenal in this film. Um, really good how the story unfolds, and you know, there's just a massive curveball. Uh, it's based on a novel, so if you've read the novel, you kind of know. Um, if you've not seen this film, definitely worth watching. Uh, it's one of David Lynch, Dave, David Lynch, David Fincher, sorry, it's one of David Fincher's best films. Um, yeah. So it, I can't say much more about it. It's really good. Obviously, Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails does a score for this also. Um, so brilliant score, brilliant film. Next is Predestination, Ethan Hawke, one that a lot of people might not have heard of or seen, and he's very underrated. Um, kind of came out to no fanfare whatsoever um, back in 2013, maybe 14, could have even 15. I should probably just look on the box and it'll tell me that it was 2013. Um, Ethan Hawke, uh, it's uh, time travel, but it's not like a time travel film that you've ever seen. Um, the thought that went into this film is just like mind blowing. Um, I can't even say a lot about it to be honest without giving major spoilers away. Um, Predestination, it was streaming somewhere, or you can probably pick it up for five, six quid. Just watch it. If you like time travel and sci fi, it's just great. Believe me, trust me, it's good. 
which leads me on to another time, not time travel, um, it, it, inversion. So this is another Christopher Nolan film and the only film of 2020 to make it onto this list. Uh, I saw this when the cinemas reopened, um, especially pretty much for this film. And I saw it on the 4DX, which was a first. I've never seen a film on the 4DX, which was, it, uh, yeah, it was great. Um, excuse the noise, it's, it's my new cat destroying the house as I do this video. So, um, here we go, Tenet. Um, a lot of people uh, are on the fence about this. Um, I think it's going to, the more the more we rewatch it, the, the more it, the, it's going to be one of those, uh, the more it gets better. Um, I've only actually seen it once. So sorry, the cinema. Uh, I've already got this copy. I'm looking forward to watching it at home, um, with with my boys and my wife and stuff. Um, looking forward to doing that. I, but you know, I'll just off first watch. Um, the the just the, the idea and the the way it was executed. Um, I, I, there's still things that I need to on the second watch pick up on. Um, I was pretty much with it until a certain point. And uh, yeah, it kind of lost me a bit, and then I couldn't catch up with it then. Um, so on my second watch, um, I'm gonna try and stick with it. And um, a lot of people are saying that you know, a film shouldn't be a challenge to watch, and um, I disagree really. Um, I think it's gonna, it's it's gonna reward on future viewings. Um, it's not not everything is obvious in Christopher Nolan's films. They do take a bit of work. Not everything is handed to you on a plate. And as for the sound design, I'm actually a big fan of the soundtracks to his films. And I think he puts the music loud in scenes for intentional purposes. Um, but, you know, there's a big debate about all that. Um, this is a film um, that's not scored by Hans Zimmer. But the guy who scored it, I uh, can't remember his name, Ludwig, I uh, can't remember his surname, um, he's done a really good job. He, he's, you know, it, it could have been a Hans Zimmer score. Um, so, you know, brilliant, mind blowing film. Really looking forward to future rewatches. Uh, if you've not seen it, um, obviously because of the pandemic and not wanting to go out, which is fully understandable, yeah, you need to get it streamed and you need to get it watched. I'll get a Blu ray, you know. Um, get a blu-ray it's better so um on to the next one which is the revenant uh 2015 leonardo caprio tomari absolutely epic film um i wanted to see this at the cinema back in 2016 yeah um and i was really geared up for it proper geared up um and we got there and uh, all the showings had sold out and they ended up uh, watching Creed instead, which Creed is a good film. I'm a big Stallone fan. I'm a big fan of the Rocky franchise. But because I'd been so hyped to watch this film, it, I didn't enjoy Creed probably as much as I should have because I just wanted to watch this. Um, so finally, I finally picked it up um, when it came out. It's an absolutely beautiful film. Pretty brutal. Um, you know, Tom Hardy's great in this. Leonardo DiCaprio deserved that Oscar. He deserved it three movies before, but at least they give him one finally. Um, he, you know, he's, he should have he should have got one for The Wolf of Wall Street, which is another film that nearly made this list and probably should be in it, but I just can't put everything in. It's just too hard. You're lucky we got this one. Anyway, next, Upgrade. Proper impressed with this film. A friend of mine recommended this to me. Uh, it took me a while to... Uh, find it because uh, it didn't really get a conventional release, um, not in the UK anyway. Um, it's it's had a second sight re-release um, recently, which is pretty special, but it's pretty expensive as well. I imported this from somewhere in Europe, um, but it, you can get it now on Netflix. Um, but you know, there we go. Um, the guy out of this film, logo Marshall Green, um, he looks a lot like Tom Hardy as you can probably see in the cover um but he's a pretty good actor as well um this is a great film this is a great action film um it's a great sci-fi film i absolutely loved it um it's 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 got elements of it's got vibes of the first terminator in it for me as well the little bits it's got a real nice cyberpunk edge to it from like those you know movies like nemesis and stuff like that it's got elements of that it's got its own ideas as well going into it. The guy that directed this, uh, Lee Wannell, as he called, um, 
he also did the Invisible Man this year, which if I was to do a 2020 list, that would have been in it, because that was actually all right. This is better though, but that was pretty good. Um, right, I'm getting pretty deep into it now. I've lost count of what number this is, so I'm not even gonna try and do that. Um, we're on to the next one. Now, when I went, um, watched this film, um, it's, it, I, I got a pretty bad fever dream the night after watching it. Um, I'm not sure if it was caused by this film, but I'm pretty sure it was. Because um, of some of the music um, in, in the soundtrack and, and stuff, I remembered when I woke up from this fever dream. <clears throat> and um, it kind of, you know, I'm a part-time kind of musician, drummer, um, and I try and write bits of music as well. Um, and after that dream, I started writing music, which would become a project that I started with my brother called Kindred. Um, so this film kind of started that off. Um, Natalie Portman, um, Annihilation, which is a guy who did Ex Machina before. Um, really stunning um, sci-fi movie. Um, really, really edgy with where it's going towards the end. Um, real good effects. Um, it's got Jennifer Jason Lee in it as well. Uh, she's really good in this. I think it's an all-female cast, actually. Oh, apart from Oscar Isaac, obviously. Um, brilliant film. Alex Garland is, like, a great director. This is... Uh, it's it's really good. Again, I think I saw this on Netflix, and then they put, they put it out on a physical release um, about a year later, which obviously I picked up. So definitely check it out uh, if you've not seen it. It's, I think it's still on Netflix, but it is available now also as well. A great film. Right, okay, getting on to some real, real gems here now. Um, so, Nicholas Wending Refn, yeah, I don't even know if that's how you say his name, probably not. I apologise if it's wrong. Um, he's a, another one of the di uh, a director that I'm really, I'm really into. Um, he also did another film um, in this time period called Only God Forgives, um, which is another Marmite kind of film. Uh, there's a lot of people that hate it, as well as a lot of people that like it. Also, I'm on the like it fence. I think it's really good. I think it's very challenging, on um, purposely in your face challenging, um, but really enjoy it. Um, he also did a film called The Neon Demon, which uh, was also quite good. Um, he... Uh, he directed Bronson, um, which is one of the, you know, if you watch a really good Tom Hardy film, that's where you need to be. Um, but we are going to talk about, obviously, Drive, Ryan Gosling. Um, I, pretty much iconic now. Um, iconic soundtrack. Just, you know, I don't even think he really talks in this film because he doesn't need to. Uh, the performance he gives is uh, just that, that, it's just full on point. Full on, it's all in his face. Yeah, all you need to do is look in his eyes, and you know, you know where it's going. Um, pretty brutal in parts. Um, one of them, it's. It, I think the brutal bits in it and the violent bits in it are made even more so because of the scenes leading up to him. Um, which you know, he's it, it's just a really well directed film. Um, yeah, I'm presuming most people have seen this now, so. I mean, if you if you haven't, you need to get on it because it's great, uh, brilliant film. Well, um, cult, it's already a cult classic. I was gonna say it's gonna come on cult classic. It already is. So there we go. Right. So um, the next film is probably one of our best action films I have ever seen. Um, I saw the original. Uh, not the original. I saw the first. Uh, I'm talking about the raid too. Um, I saw the original Raid, the Raid 1, and I enjoyed it. Um, it came out the same year as Dread, and both films were similar, and they both get compared a lot. Um, this is on a different level. Um, so it take basically set straight after that film, although you don't really have had to have seen that film, because it just this just goes somewhere completely different. Um, absolutely brutal, brutal film. Um, action scenes like, well... When it was made, I'd not seen stuff like this done to this kind of extent. Um, obviously, John John Wick Three is kind of I think it's even got some of the guys in it doing these kind of fights. So, but this is back in two thousand fifteen, 
Um, and this is an absolutely epic. It's like the godfather of action movies. Um, it's absolutely mind blowing. When I first watched it, I felt like I needed to um, take a paracetamol because it was just hard boiled action craziness and it's proper brutal. You can hear bones cracking and everything. Uh, but really good story, also. Really good film. Read to check it out. I know I said I was going to keep this short, but. Um, so, um, right, I want to try and get. Try, try, try and get through this now so here we go Nicolas Cage and Mandy is next uh, I've spoken about this film before on um, on a previous video in fact if you've seen that previous video then you probably know what the next lot of films is going to be so I apologize for, for that but anyway I'm gonna I'll fire through this now so um, yeah Nick Cage um, doing a lot of in the in this time period 2010 to 2020 doing a lot of um, lesser seen films um, not not anywhere near his 90s heyday um but then this is like a crown jewel um this is absolutely brilliant um it's it's set in the 80s and it's uh it's just nuts i'm not gonna talk about it too much because i, I don't want to give anything away it's um Nick Cage turned up to a hundred, um, but it's also a really good film. Um, his performance doesn't kind of take over the film in that way. It's like it fits it well. Um, absolutely pretty out there in the visuals. Um, really hallucinogenic. Um, people. Some people have compared it to an acid trip. Um, I've never had acid, so I don't know. But there you go. Um, brilliant, brilliant film. Um, if you've not seen it. Oh, just just watch it just watch it um okay so blade runner 2049 is a film that i put off watching for too long because i was too scared that it wasn't going to be anywhere near as good as the first film and it would i was really worried that it would tarnish the first film for me um if yeah, I, I just put it off um, I went. I, I did plan on going to the cinema to see it, but I just kept putting it off, and then it came off, and then it, I think it had been out at least a year, um, before I picked it up, um, and and then sat down to watch it and realised what a huge mistake I had made by not going and seeing this on a big screen, as it is absolutely wonderful, um, and you know a worthy follow up to the original film. Ryan Gosling is, is great in this again. Um, we've got Harrison Ford coming back into the role. Um, the effects in this are amazing. This is directed by the same guy who did Sicario, Dennis Villeneuve. I'm sorry if I got it wrong. Um, just, he, he, you know, he also did Arrival, which was another film that was in this list, but then something else came in and I had to take it out. Um, yeah, great director. Um, he's got Dune coming out, which will be um, interesting to see what that's like. Um, this is an absolutely brilliant film. Um, there's not much more I can say. Uh, if you're a fan of the original, but you've not seen this, just watch it. It's it's. I wouldn't say it's just as good. It's a worthy follow up. Definitely worthy. It might. It's probably gonna get better with time as the original did. So, great film. Right, on to the top three. Um, this is a, a newer film. So, Joker. Um, I was really impressed with this when I went to see it at the cinema. Um, and I've watched it a couple more times since. Um, another uh, Joaquin Phoenix's performance is, is, is absolutely brilliant in this film. Um, this um, they, they had another film out in this time period called The Master, which... Um, was Paul uh, Paul Thomas Anderson film, um, and he was really good in that. Uh, they, that this that's like a warm up for this. Uh, if you were to watch, they'd make really good companion pieces, and that's another film that could have made this list, but I just I just didn't. Could have put it in though. It is good, but this um, this is such a great take on the DC character, and um, I really like where he went with it. Really hard to do anything after he fled you, but they've managed to take it in a different direction. Um, great film, absolutely great film. 
next. So um, I saw this in 2015, Whiplash. Um, anybody who knows me knows I'm a drummer. I uh, have been drumming for a while. Uh, that took a lot of time off. Um, and then started doing it again a few years ago. Um, I've not really I've not really done anything this year. Um, but yeah, this film, um, absolutely mind-blowing, actually. Uh, I watched this film and uh, not long after, a few months later, I bought an acoustic drum set. So yeah, that's how good it was. Spent like 700 quid. So yeah, um, the tension in this film is is unbelievable. Just watch it if you're into if you're into um, if you're into mu music instruments anything like that. Watch it. Um, J Miles Teller is great in this. J K Simmons is terrifying in this. He's a, but he's also good. So number one. This um so this is the uh, best film for me over between two thousand ten and two thousand twenty, and it's a film that came at the start of this time period. Um, Christopher Nolan, um, it's just a great film. Uh, Inception, um, which also stars Tom Hardy. Um, just the the idea behind this film is is just great to you know the whole dream heist. Thing. Uh, the score by Hans Zimmer is absolutely amazing. Actually, always gives me goosebumps when when I hear it. Uh, some of the set pieces are absolutely amazing. How they did some of the scenes in this film still blows my mind. It still looks uh, and just as good as it did when I saw it at the cinema when I rewatched it. Just an amazing film. Um, I think most people have seen this. Um, if you haven't. Definitely check it out. Um, it's just a great... I, I can't even put a genre on it, really. Um, it's not really a sci-fi movie. It's not really an action movie. It's it's a Christopher Nolan epic masterpiece of a movie. Inception gets my number one for this video. And that is it. Um, I'd just like to say thank you very much to everyone who has watched any of the videos that I've put out this year in 2020 it's been a weird one um hopefully it won't get any weirder into 2021 but who knows um i don't know if i'm gonna do any more videos um we'll see what the new year brings but i'd just like to say thank you very much to everyone who's subscribed and you know again for for watching didn't expect anyone to really watch i was just trying to entertain myself but thank you very much um if you've enjoyed this video, then, you know, just give us a like. That would be great. Um, have a great new year. Um, fingers crossed. Thank you very much. See you later.